Welcome back you guys. I should have taken the thumbnail photo before I put this board on here, but I wasn't even planning on making this video. So it starts there. Everywhere there was board was just empty space like this down to the studs. What you need to know about a stairwell is it should be really rigid down here. So I thought using something like quarter inch was not going to give the rigidity that you need. So if you use a skirt board along the wall, which is a trim, that's fine. But if you're not using a trim, if it's going to be just a bare wall down to here, the people who are installing the steps are really going to appreciate if you take your time and make this area as flat and smooth as possible. So what I've done is I've put five eighths here because it's very strong and rigid. And as you can see, it planes out pretty close. There's a small eighth there. And in some spots, it's actually almost perfect. So we could at this stage just fill it, keep it plaster, you know, use a quick setting compound that'll go through into the lath and get really hard, take a long time to dry, but it'll be closer to the traditional plaster that it used to be. But I'm not gonna do that because for one, strips of quarter inch drywall are a lot cheaper than buckets of plaster. And two, it's not gonna take anywhere near as long to dry if we do it this way. So I've ripped this down to what should fit pretty close in here. Looks like I got a funny little joint right there. So we'll give it a quick score. There was a big hole here where there was no lath. But let's see if this fits or if it needs to be trimmed anywhere. I'm gonna cut this one right here on the stud. You definitely wanna make sure you get it fastened into the old studs. It helps suck everything back into the wall. And I often throw some screws into the lath as well. I find it doesn't hurt. So now all of this old lath is really well supported and it helps support this part of the wall too and creates an anchor for when we put a nice broad tape across here. This whole part anchors this old plaster now. Before you do your quarter inch, make sure that all the plaster that's left is sound. As you can see, that really wants to come off. It's all broken behind there. However, if it's fairly solid, there's no reason to take it off. So I could take this off, but I'm having to work pretty hard to get it off there. So I'm just gonna leave that, maybe. Yeah. No, the rest of it's pretty solid. It can stay. Okay, the puzzle has been put together. And it is not pretty at this point. It doesn't have to be. We just can't have big voids. The first taper I ever worked with used to say, Ben, I can't fill air. The second thing we wanna be sure of is that nothing's sticking out more than it should be. So that's all good. And as we go up the stairs, it's all under. So it's gonna float out really well. Okay, I know it's only been a few seconds for you, but it's been about a week for me. I'm finally ready to start filling all this stuff. Let's get to it. So it's pretty straightforward. Mash the mud into the cracks and try and leave it kind of flat. It's possible that this could take you a couple of coats to get looking good. So don't stress, right? If it's not sort of, you know, it feels like it's not coming out very nicely first, don't worry about it. Just try and get the mud on there. And we are gonna put some reinforcing tape on here 
but first it just needs to be mostly flat and that can for sure take a couple coats. And I'm going to try and take down a few of these kind of high spots just with my knife. I'm not going to worry about the spots where it's a bit empty. We're just trying to get this flat enough to tape. So just remember, it's going to be virtually impossible to not have deficiencies. And they're not even deficiencies, but what I mean is to make everything perfectly flat in this first stage. It's like not really realistic, efficient, or possible. It's just the first build up to get it so that we can, <laughs> for the third time, apply some sort of reinforcement. And as you can see, I got this stuff mixed pretty thick. I didn't even mention what it was. This is called concrete fill. As I always say in my videos, Western Canadian product that should be available everywhere, in my opinion. It's not. And you know, the funny thing is, it's made by CGC. CGC is like the parent company, or I should say the sister company to USG, United States Gypsum, and I think it's Canadian Gypsum Company. I think that's what they're both called. But yeah. They should put this stuff out in some US locations, in my opinion. They have struck to light, but it is not the same. This is an easy to work with drywall product, whereas struck to light is a plaster product with the limitations and positives of a plaster product, but Basically, it's not as user-friendly. This stuff is a pretty user-friendly product. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, you guys, this is all set up, but it's not actually dry, and this is the easier stage to do it at. When, when it is all dry, it can be a little bit harder to put the fiber fuse tape that I'm gonna use to bridge these two joints that I had there. Um, just because it pulls the moisture out of the mud faster, making it a little bit harder to wipe it out. So right now I'm just knocking down any high spots so that we can put this tape on and it comes out pretty flat. Next, we gotta put this stuff on. Got some fiber fuse cut down to about eight inches. They make six inch rules, but unfortunately, um, the gap here is about six inches. So I need something bigger. So I just cut it to about eight inches. So right now is a great time to get a little mud down into those spots that you couldn't get it. And you wanna get a uniform layer of mud smaller than an eighth of an inch. Let's just say two millimeters. <laughs> I love mixing up the metric and imperial. Get everybody mad that way. So I'm applying this with a knife because it's just too awkward to get in there with anything else. And one thing about Fiber Fuse is it, it helps to be working with a pretty worn down knife. So now I'm just trying to take out any unnecessary lumps and bumps. Okay, we're looking pretty flat. Could use a bit more there. 
And now I'm gonna take this eight inch wide fiber fuse. I'll find my end, it's right there. And we just wanna make sure that I am both under and above both of those joints. So right about there, how to do it. It's kind of hard to even find it. Where is it? Right there. Yep, we're good. And make sure there's no kinks. And just kind of flatten it out a little. I always wear gloves when working with this stuff because it makes my fingers itch something horrible. And go slow when wiping this stuff out because it actually wipes out better with a bit of mud over top of it. It needs it for like a lubrication because I have definitely found that especially if you don't have a worn out knife with a rounded edge like I do, if you have like a really sharp putty knife that's brand new, you're gonna tear this stuff. So you can sand the edges of your knife, that'll help a lot, get them a little more rounded. And I don't mean, I'm not talking about the corner of your knife, I'm talking about generally across the blade needs to be a little bit round. Uh, because all my tools are older, they all naturally have that. I mean, this knife I've been using for probably a couple of years. I'm pretty good with my tools. I don't have to replace them a lot. But yeah, we're just wiping this out like a big tape. But it's not the same as paper tape because that mud gets in, under, and on top of it. Okay, now that I have the tape looking good and fully embedded, now I'm gonna take a little bit of time to work on these spots and try and flatten that out a little bit before my next coat. This repair is a lot of work. It wasn't an easy one. But it'll look good when we're done. Okay, feather your edge as always. just down under there. Okay, so that is how to lay those tapes. So I thought I was done filming, but this is kind of a really cool little spot that I would like to show you guys. So let me just get this all buttered up first, and then I'll show you a little trick for the corners. Go to right about here. And one of these pieces should be exactly long enough. So first I gotta smooth it out so we don't have so much excess. And leave that desired couple of mils so that we're not spending all of our time getting the stuff out from underneath. So I'll make sure that I am overlapped just a little bit. I'm gonna go right into the corner and then this comes exactly long enough. It's actually a bit too long, but maybe we'll just go with it, spread a little extra back here. Okay, so we want to get this into the corner without tearing it. So I'm just getting it in there by hand. And now we'll start wiping this out. I wanna get it mostly in place before I start messing around with the corner. And this, I don't actually wanna pull it so I'm going up and down mostly. That way that corner doesn't get too pulled out and rounded. But it is a plaster corner, so it's gonna be okay if it's got some roundness. And now I take one of these and you have to keep it really flat. If you angle it like this, you'll tear it. So that's kind of forming a nice square corner with the mud. That's good enough. 
So now let's gently clean it up without really, without putting much pressure in that corner at all. And I'm also gonna be trying to get the bottom nice and smooth. I'll do that in a second. All right, I'm happy enough with that. Let's leave it alone. So I'm taking the opportunity to flush this up a little bit. Instead of just embedding the tape and walking away, we can make this flatter so when the time comes to install baseboards, it's really nice and flat. It's just giving us a nice head start there. And we're almost done, but not quite. Let's get a little more in that corner. There we go. That's looking good. And I feel like this could use one last little bit. Yeah, this will never end. There we go. There we go. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Okay, now let's get a nice look at everything. So as we can see, it's already looking quite flat and tidy. And I forgot to mention this was taping mud, air drying mud. I personally would not do something of this size with setting type mud, installing the uh, fiber fuse that is. Taping or all-purpose heavyweight are both perfectly adequate. Trying to use setting mud could cause a whole lot of major problems. So the reason that setting mud could really come back to bite you is that uh, when you do a second layer of quick set, what tends to happen is as soon as it touches the first layer that's already kicked off, then that nice fresh layer that you just mixed up that should have, you know, like if it's 90 minute, it should have at least an hour of working time. But as soon as it hits that already set mud, it starts to set up a little bit. So what's going to happen is even if you make your quick set really runny, it's going to start thickening up and especially some of the spots where you're like scraping off some of the hardened quick set and it's getting thrown back into your mix. Well, that's going to start kicking off your mix. So the whole thing is going to be a total headache and you're probably not going to be able to wipe the fiber fuse really tight onto the wall. So that is why I would do this whole stage with air drying mud. It's definitely going to be way easier might not be the right word because it, it probably is going to be a challenge for most people without experience, but it's at least not going to be a total nightmare like trying to do the whole thing with Quickset will be. So as you could see, this is like so nice and flat already that it's only going to take two quick coats to cover it. Like they can be pretty thin, whereas normally if it was taped with paper tape, you'd have this sort of big hump and that's going to take a thick coat, a sanding, and then another thin coat to finish it off. But this one is probably, like I said, going to be two pretty thin coats to get this looking really flat and smooth. And if you wanna see that, you're gonna to have to check out the future videos uh, because it's, it's too hard for me to stagger the filming stages of these. Um, but on that note, to make good on that promise, why don't we see where this job is at right now so you can start to see some of the stages of where it's at. Okay, so we got those patches up there in the stairwell done. I'm not going to show you the ladder that I used to do that with. Let's just say the drywall fairy got it done. <laughs> Flew up there with his wings and did it. Uh, I put a steel corner bead on this yesterday and then filled this out because I had to install this corner bead sticking out about a quarter inch to get it to line up with that other one. So I figured why not nail on a steel bead and then I darbied this with confill. So it's nice and flat because there was like over a quarter inch to fill between that corner bead and right there. That still hasn't been taped yet, but it will. It was where it lined up to another corner bead. As we could see coming down here, we got this back pre-filled. Um, there was a lot going on here. Don't ask why it's boarded like that. Tying into plaster, three eighths drywall, half inch drywall. That's pre-filled and ready to go. This back corner was kind of a nightmare. I wish I could have made a video about it, but it might have actually just been boring and lame. We're eventually gonna install a really cool stained glass window here. Not done yet. And here is the other fiber fuse patch that I did repairing that plaster there. 
So this job is not taped yet. It's just pre-filled and I've done a few of the big annoying things. And this beam is going to need to be leveled out. So I forgot to check, forgot to check it. As you can see that it's not totally even. So I got to flatten out some of those humps and I'm going to have to do it with mud at this point. So that'll be part of another video that I'm doing. Uh, the homeowner is framing something back here and I'll have to do a bunch of board and corner bead there. The arch, I'm not even near starting that yet because I have to film it. But anyways, and we got this part all patched up up here and starting to look pretty good. It's not taped yet, just a whole lot of pre-fill to level everything out. And then this wall with all this weird random boarding was another one. The back there is half inch and then it goes to three eighths in the middle there, that one little strip. And then it's half inch again at the bottom. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, this job's actually been pretty intense. There's been a lot going on here. I've now finished all the hardest parts of it. So basically the rest of this job is just corner bead and tape. That's the easy part. The hard part was shimming all of the walls to get everything pretty flush and looking good. And then all the random different sizes of board I had to use to get there. All the crazy fiber fuse patches and tie-ins, like it's, it's been big. Anyways, we don't need to talk about any more of that because it's done. I just wanted to show you guys the stages of this job so you actually got to see it. Anyways, that is it. So as always, I hope your project's going really well, but I hope you're doing even better. I really mean that every time I say it, you guys. So thanks for watching. Till the next one.